All right, we're moving on to, I feel like I've got a hundred of these <laughs> videos of ponderings of when I watch horses do stuff. And I'm just going to play this, this out. You guys can see what happens. Uh, turn off the audio just a second. Let's turn it back on for added effect. <laughs> right there. Right there. Did you guys see that? I found this part, as I'm going through this video, I, there's just so many things to look at um, and watch. But I remember watching a video a while back, and there was a racehorse on a racetrack, and it was running out of control, and um, some lady decided she would try to stand in front of the horse to stop it, and she literally just got plowed down. Uh, I don't know what happened with the lady. I'm assuming she... Uh, went to the hospital. Uh, I don't think that she did well, obviously, from that. Horses are big, they're fast, they're powerful. They don't have any trouble running us over. So as I've said a billion other times in these videos, I'm always thinking about how to be safer around horses. And what amazed me about this one, we're just going to roll this back a little bit. And uh, so we've got Mr. Wild at the back. He's gone running to the back because he's running back and forth. And he decides to have a little race up the front, and Annie's on her way down, and they meet right in the middle there. There's, they're going, they're going right at each other, both going in the same. And Annie sees this; she knows he's coming. He's not stopping. And I find that um, the ability to recognize a horse's intent is vital to our safety. Uh, to our ability to respond, to our ability to uh, predict and keep others out of danger as well. So if if we just, just roll it back a little, Annie's looking very attentive. You can see her ears are very forward. Her whole body is, is looking comfortable moving forward. We're just going to go by, just frame by frame. Again, if you haven't seen the last one, uh, I shoot these videos all at 60 frames per second, so every frame is 1 60th of a second. And so as I hit the arrow key, we're going 1 60th of a second along. And I'm just holding here, so it's at half speed. See, so she's coming forward. And she's got that one flick of her ear right there. Uh, and I believe that horse is... Uh, well indicate, like, and indicate well in advance of what they're probably going to do, like a blinker in a car almost. Not that you really can catch this stuff uh, consciously, but subconsciously, I think that we can get this. And so, anyways, so check this out. So she goes right, and just before she goes right, she's got that ear that comes over. She's already kind of leaning into it, but not him. Mr. Wild is coming in fast and hard. He's got his left ear that comes back first. If we just come back a little bit, both ears are forward. Both ears are forward on both horses. His left ear goes back, if you're watching Mr. Wild right now. And then his right ear comes back. And he's ready to come forward, but he's leaning a little bit to the left. She's leaning quite a bit to the right at this point. And he's, he's willing to kind of make his way a little bit more through. But right about here, he starts to realize she's a little more prepared than he hoped for. So as he comes in, he's going to make a, a reach with his, his mouth, but he can't because she's quick enough to flip around, which I've heard and, and listened and watched a lot about how cats and squirrels and monkeys and stuff like that use their tails to rebalance themselves and do things. I think horses have the same ability. Not that they have a very heavy tail, but there is definitely something there that allows them to just sort of do a little bit and especially wave that thing around. The, the, the uh, tail of a horse can actually be its most dangerous part uh, in, in innocuous situations when you're behind a horse. A lot of people worry about getting kicked. I worry more about getting whipped in the face with a tail because it hurts. And they come apart almost at the exact... Look at this. This is just... They're both coming off the ground at the same time, right? 
He's bringing his butt around. Her butt's already there. Both of them are kind of facing each other. And neither of them kicked. Both of them actually kind of half stumbled with their legs. It was an odd thing. Like, neither of them kind of got their legs, their back legs sort of set properly. And right, right, I think here is where both of them are kind of thinking about sending out a leg. It's hard to explain. But over time, the more you watch these behaviors, and Annie's got a shake of her head. She's pretty frustrated by it. So a horse will move their head back and forth. She does that quite a bit. And they both keep an outside eye. Or I guess it's an inside eye? Inside turned to outside? Eye on each other until they finally come back around. And then now their inside eye is in again. And they come back. And he goes and follows her. But it just... It can teach us a lot as to the effect. Annie's probably half his size, half his weight, probably close, maybe a little bit more. How she can give him an indication she is going to defend her space. And I talk a lot about that with people that are hanging around with horses. And, um, Good playtime. And the horses are Great charging around and doing crazy stuff. And... And it's one of the reasons I'm able to be in the herd as well, in, in, in the arena with everybody, because they all know that if I can, I'll defend my space. I'll make sure my space stays safe. Now, I haven't had to do that in a very long time. It rarely happens. I'd say it more happens with new horses that aren't used to humans following through. I'm going to do another video soon or a couple other, at least one other incident that happened in this playtime of how following through with our intent is absolutely 100% vital. And he was absolutely going to follow through. If we come back, there's no two ways about it. She was going to turn and she was going to kick. She was all prepared. Her tail was coming under. She was, she was, she was getting those legs ready to go. And she has done plenty of kicks. He knows it, doesn't want to get kicked. And so he makes a turn and comes around, and, and he didn't Great strike on himself, I guess. Great, Great socialization. Time, time to do so. Okay. And, uh, My water didn't barrel. Need to, didn't need to do anything about it. So, fascinating stuff. And then off they go back down to the bottom. And see, she's ready to kick at all times, and he keeps his distance, and his head stays and He gets to be like a pesky older brother. Right? See, look at that timing. She can't reach him. She can't even get close to him, but his head's already up. Just in case. They do chuck sand around quite a bit, though, so sometimes sand will call. But you can see she's not really put much into it. Her legs didn't extend out. Uh, a proper kick will have, yeah, will have uh, have those legs really be reaching out. But he's he's very wary because she does follow through. She always, if she's going to kick, she's going to kick. Well, she'll crow hop her, her last couple just to let him know that she's still ready. Just fascinating stuff, watching these guys. <laughs> oh, he's, he didn't come around because I was in the way. So that was going on. And back down to the bottom. And here we go again, one more. I wasn't meaning to go this far, but here we are. And here she doesn't kick. Actually, I think I'll include this into this one. So a lot of chasing around, a lot of this stuff where we're watching them kind of go around. She's, he's coming in at an angle that he's going to make a left, a little bit more of a left than a right. And she sees that. So she hangs a right. And then he's already prepared cut right to make her, to sort of trap her. And so she has to stop, right? Because he's cut off her drive line. So she stops. And then rather than kicking out here, which she could do, you can see she's just barely prepped right about here about there yeah but she doesn't and she just stops and kind of complies kind of just says oh, you got me i'm in the corner i don't want any trouble he's like cool you're mine now it's like yeah all right let's both just take it easy and they do they just take it easy in the corner for a little bit there and he says don't go anywhere and so she doesn't so these types of behaviors I find are fast. I mean, she escapes after. If we, if we come back here, you can see that she's made her way out. But he's allowed her to do so as well. Perfect. And it's a great relationship. So 
there's a lot to really unpack when we watch horses do things, which brings about the concept of drive and draw an awful lot. Because he's sort of driving her around. But on the same note, she's sort of half drawing him. And when he finally drives her into the corner, she stands there. They both each have draw on each other to just hang out together. She hasn't left. She kind of came out of the corner. It's safer. If she wanted to leave, she could. But she doesn't. She stays. And he's pretty content with that until he finally wanders off. He's like, well, I guess I'll go okay, get myself well, a drink uh... of water. So this kind of stuff, is, I think it's vital when it comes to creating a horse-human relationship as well, because we have to speak their language more than they're going to speak ours, even though we do have to help them understand ours. Uh, but it is much better and more expeditious, in my opinion, if we study and learn how they move and how they go about doing things so that we can ask them to do the same amount of things. And then add in, on top of that, our human uh, communication. And create a good relationship that's very understandable where you can just give an eyeball you can do what other horses do where they just flick an ear or sort of turn an eye and they get something out of another horse so all right well that's it for this one i went way farther than i wanted to go hopefully that's been a little bit interesting and uh, i'll see you guys in the next one